Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the SG300 printer now and the software that's used. Yep. We start off with VersaWorks, that's our control software, our RIP software, our image processing software. The important thing about VersaWorks is you have to run it as an administrator. So we right click, run as administrator, yes. This software can use JPEGs. Um, the only issue with JPEGs is they are raster images. And I don't know, we talked yesterday a little bit about raster versus vector images. JPEGs okay. are made by pixels and those pixels can only get so big before you start to see them. Gotcha. Vectors are, are built on math, so they're infinitely scalable because it just recalculates all, okay. all the yeah. relationships. So a JPEG will work. Um, but again, you're gonna be limited, like if this is a three and a half, or uh, 3.9 by one inch, I wouldn't wanna scale it up too much bigger than that. Cause even though the software has some, uh, some built-in processes to try to account for that, it's not perfect. Okay. So if you took a picture of say your kids that was originally this big and tried to blow it up to the size of the wall, again, like we talked about yesterday, from far away, it's gonna look great, you know, from the other side of the building. But when you get up close, you're gonna see those pixels. Okay. Um, so we, we like to use PDFs. Uh, or EPS files. Um, those are both vector formats that uh, this machine, that this software likes. Um, so for a simple workflow, uh, we have different queues here for different reasons. This is not really relevant to you now, so I would just stick with using one. So I'm gonna add job to QA. I'm gonna go find where our logo is. So in this case, I downloaded this one today, and we'll open that. That gets imported here. Um, there's a little bit of Java information on the right here, but it's not really relevant to us yet. We're gonna double click and that opens our job settings. So these are settings specific to this job. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is get our media width. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pull the reading from the machine, which is determined by the pinch roll, which we'll probably go with. But we do that because we don't wanna set this up for something that's too wide to, that we can't print. So um, I just, I'm gonna work my way from top to bottom. So get media width, custom roll, that's fine. Scaling, um, this is fine. This is a th you know three by four roughly sticker. So I don't need to change that. Um, I can if I want to by percentage. I can change it by absolute. Uh, absolute values on either of these. I can fit it to media size. I can make one giant sticker. Positioning, uh, you can change the positioning if you want to off of that uh, edge or center it on the media. Uh, we'll come back to this actually. Okay. The important thing and the reason why you saw me do 11 stickers or whatever I did the other day is that you're gonna use the same amount of media no matter what, and you can't reuse it once you've used one. So if you have this much, so this is all So if you're gonna print one sticker, you might as well print however many fit. So in this case, six. But the other thing now, you could do- Now I can also rotate it, and now I can fit nine. Gotcha. So I'm only using now an extra, what, inch, 1.1 inches of media, but getting nine, uh, three more stickers out of it. So now I come back to my positioning and I'll center that on the media. To get, there is space between these stickers to get a little bit more mm -hmm. for your cutting, you can increase that here. So I don't want to go to 0.41, but maybe I want to go to like 0.25. So now I've got a quarter of inch of space in between each that I should be able to get a paper slicer or a scissor in between. Now, the other thing you can do is if I had more of these, let's say I was doing two rows, um, you can do equal X and Y spacing or separate X and Y. So now I'm at 0 0.16, 0 0.16, but I can make this 0.25. Our next is our quality. Um, generic vinyl is gonna be fine for most of what you wanna do. The, this media type setting, there's different profiles you can download. And what those profiles attempt to do is, if you ever bought copy paper, you know this might be a, a 92, 92 pound 20 or 92 bright 20 pound paper but you can get 94 pound 40 pound or 94 white 40 pound paper right it's thicker a little bit whiter um, so what these profiles attempt to do is is color correct for the media that you put into the machine for most of your applications you're not going to notice that this shade of green is uh is one hue off because of the backing just similar like we talked about the backing of the t-shirts the backing of the color of that media is gonna change what uh, what this print looks like. Gotcha. But for 99% of what we do, we're never gonna notice. Um, quality is you high quality. The difference you can see here is is um, 
you know, 900 by 900 DPI. Uh, and this does, high quality does 16 passes to really fill in the graphic and make it nice and sharp versus um, you know, 12 on standard or eight on high speed. This section here has to deal with uh, image correction. So if you are using JPEGs and trying to blow them up, these are the, uh, the methods that the software will use to try to resolve those pixelation issues. Um, it's a little, little bit over my head. Uh, Brian Balrick from Roland has a really good video on all these settings, really goes into it. Like it's basically how the calculations in the computer work. Each of these is more resource intensive. So nearest neighbor, it's gonna grab the closest pixel and try to blend it to that. By cubic, it's gonna do some, or by cube, by linear, it's gonna try to do some other sort of calculations to blend the edges and by cubic, it's gonna do an even further set of calculations. But um, for PDFs, that's typically not gonna be an issue because we're not worried about scaling issues there. The rest of these, um, I don't use too much, but we'll go through them. Color adjustment, you can theoretically set the CMYK levels of each of these, the brightness and contrast. Oh, so if you wanna cut, you can have marks if you wanna cut. Yep, so we can add trim marks. Now that changes, obviously now we're on two two rows now, so I can have less of, gotcha. you know, I have less that I can print on one row. I can have margin marks, which will kind of print, you know, in between each, which is nice. Um, I don't know what these are. I don't know what FOTOVA is. Maybe it's a specific manufacturer or something like that that makes a cutting machine for it. Um, you can have crop marks for each row. This is more for um, if you're gonna print something, take it to another machine and laminate it and bring it back to this machine to cut, you need these registration marks. Printer controls, I wouldn't use any of these. I typically like to set this on the printer itself. Um, so for feed calibration, we use our printer settings. For heater controls, we use our printer settings. Um, and we can talk about those different things uh, when we get over the printer. Cut controls, there are two, there, there's a couple ways to add your your cuts. So like how we cut out these stickers. Um, my personal way is I like to do that in my design software because I have more control over the cut line. That's a training for another day. It's a more in-depth thing when we talk about the graphic stuff. Uh, to do a very simple kind of boundary cut, you can just use this cut image boundaries here and you see these these dancing lines here indicate that we're gonna cut around, uh, just a square around the edge. Um, the rest of this stuff, again, the cut passes, the cutting conditions, I set that on the machine. So job management, you know, save job after printing, basically it saves it in this, in this list. Okay. You can have it not do that if you want, but it doesn't really matter. Clip and tile, um, this is pretty good in terms of we're doing stickers, so I kind of want some of this margin. Um, in some cases with PDFs, um, if I have a PDF that's on the screen eight and a half by 11, and I have my, my logo is only this big, you know, two by two or three by three, when I bring it into the system, it's gonna bring in this entire, oh, thing. This entire thing. So I might come into this and grab these red handles and clip Almost this like down. It. Yeah, crop right, that it's down. basically just allowing you to crop. And another, reason you might use this feature is imagine, for instance, maybe you just want to print the Allegheny College of Maryland part without the, the actual logo. Or maybe you just want to print the logo without the Allegheny College of Maryland without having to go and readjust your graphic. Because this happens all the time. Somebody might send a file to the person who's tasked with running the machine and say they want this stuff done tomorrow. Well, that person leaves and this person's here and they need to make this happen, but they don't have the graphics file. So they could use this stuff to say, oh, well, they sent me this file that's got more data in it than we want. I can crop this down and still accomplish it without asking them to edit the, the graphics file in Illustrator or InDesign or whatever it came out of. Um, tiling, so tiling is gonna be if you, so you have a 30 inch printer. Let's say you want to print something for this whole wall, which is, I don't know, eight feet. You're gonna need to tile that because you can't print something eight feet wide. So in this case, um, you know, this is a small thing, so it's not, uh, but if I wanted to do this, let's say one of these, and I wanted this to be 55 inches wide. See, it automatically does some tiling based on my width. It will automatically do a tile, but it doesn't do it, in my opinion, super great. So you can come back in here 
and manually do it. So in this case, I might want my scene to be right on that transition mm -hmm. because I'll be able to, it'll be easier for me to line up yep. or, or whatever else, right? So you can kind of come in here and manually tile this stuff if you want. You can do uh, a, a, a thing where you set the size of the tile manually. You can just say it, have it automatically say that I want, you know, two horizontal or three horizontal and it's just gonna try to even them out. So different ways to um, to do your tiling. You can also print a little bit of an overlap. So that way it's easier for you to line it up on the wall or whatever you're putting on there. You print an overlap so that you don't have to worry about a gap between the two. Okay. Uh, and then this is variable data, which I've never used, but I think if you have a table, if you're printing out stickers and you want say Allegheny College, uh, with you know my name on the bottom and your name on the bottom and Alex's name on the bottom and Rebecca's name on the bottom, right? Like you would have a table in there that would be able to change each one, each of those things. But I've never, I've never really used that. So that is job setup. So once I have everything set up the way I want it, I'll press OK. You can then rip process it, raster image process the file, or if you just click print, it'll rip it and then print. So if you rip first, one, you have, it's two, it's two steps. So you have to wait until it's done. It's processing. So, so it's taking, so if you notice like this stuff all changed. So now we have number of copies that are nine. We have a, a full print area uh, estimation. We have ink, uh, consumption. Our ink consumption, which is important before that. It just might say it defaults to 0.01. But once you rip the job, it'll tell you how many CCs you're using. If you're gonna be pricing jobs that way, then I would rip it first. It's going to give you this data anyway, but if somebody wants to say, well, how much will this cost me? Rip it first, and then you could tell them that. If they're okay just saying, ah, whatever it costs, I'll just pay it afterwards, then you can just print it. Uh, once that's done, we've ripped, and that's this check mark here. Again, if you if you hover over everything, that kind of tell you. Um, you just hit print. Start up. Sent it over the network.